pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline. St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese-Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline. St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese-Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese-Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline.
St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese-Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline. St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the Word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese-Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline. St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the Word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education 
and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline. St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese-Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Health Talks, a webinar series presented to you by SJCS Alumni Association in collaboration with the St. Jude Catholic School and the SJCS Parents Auxiliary Group. 大家好,欢迎出席今天的健康讲座网络研讨会. Health Talks is a series of webinar initiated by the SJCS Alumni Association to enlighten us with the topics on health and wellness. 健康讲座是崇德校友会举办的一个网络研讨会系列 Today's health talk entitled Wonder Vision, Keeping Kids' Eyes, Pandemic Eyes Healthy, is the second webinar for health talk series. Today's talk focuses on our children's eye care. And we are fortunate to have with us Dr. Alvina Pauline Santiago, Division Chief of the Pediatric Ophthalmology of the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the Philippine General Hospital. To begin today's session, let's call on our school principal, Reverend Father Paulino Belamide, for the opening prayer and remarks. Okay, while, we, while we're waiting for um, the setup so Father King can um, give uh, his um, opening remarks and lead us for the opening prayer. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I have been praying already. I, I was mute. <laughs> muted. <pala ako. laughs> so anyway, uh, may, I, may I start now? Yes, Father, Hello? please. Yes, okay. yes, Father. So, uh, my dear Judy Nice and commissionaries, good morning to all of you. Uh, uh, before we proceed with the, the activity, let us briefly put ourselves in the presence of God, invoking His blessing uh, for, this, for today's activity. Now, today, um, the prayer for the prayer, I, I would like uh, you to join me in praying to. To, to invoking the intercession of Saint Lucy. Saint Lucy is a fourth century saint, uh, virgin and martyr, uh, and considered to be patron of everything connected with the eyes. I think uh, he was, she was, she was, before she was killed, uh, she was tortured by, by her eyes being gouged out. So um, anyway, um, so uh, let us, uh, uh, you pray with me uh, uh, to Saint Lucy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Lucy, your beautiful name signifies light. By the light of faith which God bestowed upon you, increase and preserve this light in my soul so that I may avoid evil, be zealous in the performance of good works, and abhor nothing as much as the blindness and darkness of evil and sin. By your intercession with God, obtain for us perfect vision for our bodily eyes and the grace to use them for God's great honor and glory and the salvation of all. So Saint Lucy, Virgin and Martyr, hear our prayers and obtain for us our petitions. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. So um, uh, on behalf of uh, the school director, Father Roland Aquino, SBD, I would like to welcome you all to this health webinar. Uh, I think it's the second one. It's sponsored, initiated and sponsored by the St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association. And we also welcome and thank our resource person for today, uh, Dr. Alvina Pauline Santiago of the UPPGH Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences for being available today to share with us her knowledge and expertise. The topic of today, as, uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Ms. Shirley Chu, is about it's wonder vision, oh, keeping kids' pandemic eyes healthy. A very timely and appropriate topic, uh, 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 for sure. Uh, actually, uh, this is uh, there is a dilemma in this, that uh, the school faces now as we go through this remote learning program. Uh, how to, <laughs> because the online program, uh, the remote learning program is heavily uh, stressful to the eyes because of the uh, of the uh, online uh, modality that we are using. The dilemma is this: no, how to keep our kids healthy, especially the eyes, but at the same time maintain the quality of education that we are we are uh, offering. If you if you ask the medical professionals, of course they they would choose to err on the side of caution, you know. And I hear this, this, this there's even some regulation about how many hours our children should be uh, in front of the screen. But I I, I read it. There are only suggestions. <laughs> of course, uh, on the part of the school, our our problem is, now, yeah, how to balance all these things. And I, 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 so what I am hoping is that Dr. Pauline, uh, Dr. Alvina Pauline Santiago would be able to, to help us in uh, balancing the, this, this uh, conflicting demands of the remote learning program. Uh, I think that's all what I want to say. And, and uh, so welcome again and, uh, I hope you would have a very fruitful morning today. So, marami salamat po. Thank you, every, thank you, Father Belamides. Thank you, Father King. And now to give the welcome remarks of Mr. Johnny C., our SJCSAA president, let's call on SJCSAA Secretary, Ms. Jehan Lee. Reverend Fathers, fellow alumni, fellow parents, Judenites, teachers, friends, a, a blessed Sunday to all of you. Our AA President, Mr. John C., conveys his apologies for not being able to join us this morning due to a family emergency. So allow me to share with you his welcome remarks. There is a popular saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But what happens when the eyes of the beholder are bad? Remember a popular commercial for an eye care entity where the person with poor eyes makes wrong judgments on a possible partner or goes to the wrong restroom. It sounds funny, but it could be serious, especially when it comes to the eyes of your people still studying. The ability to learn is then impaired or hampered. Today, as everyone is forced to use digital devices in their studies, the constant exposure to the screens and the resulting eye strain is a cause for worry. We are fortunate to have an expert, Dr. Alvina Pauline Santiago, to guide us on how to care for our eyes 
during these challenging times. It's a timely subject and definitely something we should all be conscious about as we nurture our students and the health of their eyesight through the needs of virtual and blended learning. We are grateful for another collaborative effort among the Alumni Association, the Parents Auxiliary Group, and St. Jude Catholic School that produces these relevant and important discussions. We are grateful for Father Aquino and members of the SJCS administration for their continued support for this endeavor. We are also appreciative of the support coming from Parents Auxiliary Group, specifically Ms. Rachel Garcia, High School PAC President, Ms. Audrey Season, ECD PAC President, and thank you to Jehan Lee of both the AA and PAG, as well as our alumni medical consultant, Dr. Rosalind Cody Chow, for helping designing and organizing this event. Thank you, Ms. Shirley Chu, High School PAG Secretary, for moderating this event. Mr. Don Helido and Mr. Kenneth Raiko for the tech support. May this session provide us understanding and enlightenment on how to protect our wonder vision throughout our lives. Thank you very much. Tiayo Chongta, Tiayo Seiju. Thank you, Jehan. And now for, for the remarks from our school physician, Let's welcome our school physician, Dr. Ellen Tanku. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. First, uh, I would like to greet a uh, blessed Sunday to Father Belamide and all the other priest administrators, uh, members of the Alumni Association and our SJCS Parents Auxiliary Group and all members of the SJCS community, students and parents alike. Uh, good morning to sa lahat. Uh, first, I would like to commend the initiative of the Alumni Association and the SJCS PAG for uh, holding this very, very timely and uh, important health and wellness talks. The pandemic, uh, as we know, uh, paved the way or gave us an inkling that one's health and immunity is really very important during this time. No? For two years now and maybe uh, more years to come, we may uh, have to do some changes and adjustments in the way we live, the way we work, and the way we socialize. The educational sector, just like St. Jude Catholic School, was not spared from this. It had to adopt a strategy so as not to disrupt or to ensure the continuity of education of our students. Thus, the birth of the online or the remote learning program. The digital multimedia devices like our smartphones, tablets, and computers gave us the means to engage and to teach our children. While the digital age have paved the way for comfort and convenience, it may also cause numerous eye problems that may affect not only our children, but also some of our parents and the teachers who are also working from home and also find themselves uh, uh, having a prolonged screen time. One of the toughest challenges I know that parents are facing today is how to manage the screen time of their children since not only school interaction, but also social interaction likewise are all screen-based due to the pandemic. So are we seeing the probability of the effect of prolonged eye focus driving a worldwide epidemic of nearsightedness in children? Uh, let us learn together, as I'm sure adults who also work from home find themselves in front of their computer screens for prolonged periods of time. So this morning, uh, I'm equally excited as everyone uh, to listen to the talk of our esteemed speaker, Dr. Santiago, Shirley, thank you very much. Thank you, Doctora. And now to give the remarks from parents, let's welcome Mrs. Audrey Season, our ECD PAG president. Good morning, Reverend Fathers, fellow alumni, fellow parents, teachers, Judonites, 
and the rest of the SJCS community. When the pandemic hit last year, almost everyone's plans have been turned upside down. Most schools started implementing online classes to ensure continuous learning. With these, the new normal greatly affected the vision problems of everyone, especially our kids. The online learning has forced the increase of screen time each child spends. Parents could not help but feel anxious about its adverse effects to the eyes. We hope that the Wonder Vision Health Talk will come in handy for us parents to be able to understand how we could help keep the eyes of our children healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. And just um, so that everyone knows, um, we are also live streamed through the St. Jude YouTube channel. Okay, so now let us welcome Mrs. Rachel Garcia, our SJCS High School PAG president, to introduce our resource speaker. Reverend Fathers, St. Jude Catholic School co-missionaries, fellow parents, students, alumni, and friends, a pleasant good morning to all. Our guest speaker is a graduate of medicine in 1990 at the University of the Philippines. She is a resident doctor at the Philippine General Hospital, Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and a fellow at the Children's Eye Care Center of New Jersey and Jules Stein Eye Institute, University of California, Los Angeles. Currently, she is a member of the Philippine Board of Ophthalmology Board of Trustees, a division chief of pediatric ophthalmology at the PGH Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and a section chief pediatric ophthalmology at St. Louis Castle City and the Medical City. Without further ado, may we present to you Dr. Alvina Pauline Santiago. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Can you hear me or is there feedback? There's feedback. Let me turn off. Is that better? Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think I should have uh, spoken to Father Paulino first before I made my lecture. No? Um, but but uh, trust me, Father, this will help this will help the school also. No? Um, I'd like to thank St. Jude for thinking of kids' vision. I think it's very timely. It's probably just uh, not kids' vision. We will also have to uh, take to heart some of the suggestions as all of us are probably on the computer and our cell phones a lot. Okay, and I'd like to thank the organizers for this very beautiful uh, title slide. Um, it's in line with the times. It's Wonder Vision, keeping the pandemic eyes of our kids healthy. Okay, um, let me see, how should I? There. Yeah. Um, okay. So I had to put down all my institutions so I don't get a technical uh, citation for not citing all of them. Okay, some of the materials here are brought to you by the Philippine Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus, um, a subspecialty society under the Philippine Academy of Ophthalmology. The lectures are, I know, right? Uh, where simple must knows about your child's eyes Outdoor Fun in the Sun, the Impact of Daily Activities and Gadget Use on Children's Vision and Health, and Salamin Salamin, Makakatulong Ba Ito Sa Akin, The Real Deal on Eyeglasses in Children. Each of these is a, a mini lecture on its own. I try to get the more uh, important features that uh, or important slides that important take-home messages that can help us today. Okay, let me see. We're just going to discuss three things, digital eye strain, myopia, and some of the myths associated with uh, the, the use of computers in these times. No? Um, digital eye strain is also known as dry eye. Uh, in, in digital eye strain, you can also get dry eye. You can get asthenopia or eye strain. You can get headaches, and you can complain of fluctuating vision. Under myopia, we will sort of discuss what nature has given you and predisposes you to myopia and what nurture can do so that we stop what we call the myopia epidemic. Then we'll talk about some myths. Okay, prior to the pandemic, and uh, Father Paulino was uh, right in, in saying this, no? there are a lot of um, 
there are a lot of authorities trying to teach you or trying to recommend um, reduced screen time, especially for children. Uh, at age one, we wanted children not to have screen time at all. At age two, it should be less than an hour per day. Uh, and then they should watch quality programs with adult supervision for not more than an hour. For age three to four, it should be less than an hour per day with adult supervised screen time. And we'd like you to start encouraging children to go get into interactive play for physical and mental health development. Then above age five, this should be a guided screen time with adult supervised quality screen time with frequent breaks in between. But we had to abandon this because of the pandemic. Now, what I tell my parents and, and the children is let's sort of survive this pandemic first and let's worry about uh, our eyesight um, by, by uh, using interventions that, that we know we can, that can help. Okay, so what are these interventions? We will discuss that later. Now, by age three, Many of our kids have digital device exposure. No? 68 up to 70% of our kids regularly use computer and 50, 54%, no, my nephews included, will know how to get online and search on Google and even uh, use YouTube. No? And hopefully that's YouTube for kids. And I am sure our 2020 pandemic figures are definitely higher because this was a study done in 2018. Okay, and it gets aggravated by multitasking using digital device. Many of the adults are probably guilty of this. You're on the cell phone talking to someone or uh, viewing something while watching television also. Okay, so it's multiple devices that aggravate your digital device exposure. Use of two or more devices simultaneously is seen in uh, about 80 to, 80, 80, 80 to 90 percent of adult uh, patients aged 20 to 9 in the UK and about 70% of Americans. But this was pre-pandemic. No, I can imagine the figures now is really higher because of what we were, uh, we, what we are forced to be in because of the pandemic. No. Okay. So what is digital eye strain? In the literature, you will see it as asthenopia. You will see it as visual fatigue, also computer vision syndrome, uh, video terminal display syndrome. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me mute that. Okay. Video terminal display syndrome and video display terminal syndrome. It is defined as physical eye discomfort after more than two hours of exposure to digital screen. I'm sure many of you have experienced this. I feel more tired after a two hour uh, Zoom meeting than a two hour face to face meeting. Uh, it's because you have to watch intently in front of the computer and more than two hours really gives you some type of physical discomfort. So what do we do for classes that last from eight to 12 and maybe one to five? Okay, you, you will see digital eye strain in up to 50% of computer users. In children, the pool prevalence was determined to be about 20%. Uh, this was 2018 figure, so I'm sure this is higher now. And it will impact on learning and school performance. So these are the symptoms. Um, when you use both eyes together, you will have some type of binocular vision stress. So you will complain of headache. You will have blurred vision or fluctuating vision. In extreme cases, some patients will experience nausea and vomiting. And then those who have pre-existing misalignment will get a breakdown of their eye misalignment. Those who have borderline control will break down because of the prolonged vision stress. Now, externally, these symptoms include blinking because of drying of the eye, and then you get a reflex tearing because your eyes are dry, you will tear up more. And because your eyes are dry, you will get burning sensation. You will have photophobia where bright lights uh, become very uncomfortable. And because of the drying, you will also get itchy eyes. No? Okay, so what can we do? The American Optometric Association recommends the 20-20-20 rule. What is that? Rest your eyes for at least 20 seconds every 20 minutes by looking 20 feet away. So the challenge now is 
reminding yourself that it's been 20 minutes no so for class for class work hopefully every 20 minutes the the school or maybe the teacher can ask the children to blink a few times no or close the eyes for about 20 seconds i don't think it will take much from the school time by doing that okay then also for uh many of us we can download an app 20.20.20 .20 .20, uh i Mine's on the iPhone. I think it's also available on the uh, Android phones. What it does is it tells you, uh, what, what it does is you can program. No? You can program the time that you are on the computer. So for me, I program my phone from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Now, every 20 minutes, it will remind you it's time for your eyes. No? So what it tells you is every 20 minutes, time for your eyes, it will count down for you 20 seconds. So you can either blink, you can either close your eyes or look at least 20 feet away. Okay, so I don't have proprietary interest to the app. It's a free app that you can download. Okay, let me see. Okay, um, for those with eye misalignment, and uh, fusion anomalies or difficulty in using both eyes together, you will aggravate your condition by being on the computer for a prolonged period of time. Uh, you will experience greater discomfort. You will experience uh, decompensated eye misalignment. You will have reduced blur points, which means the um, period of time also that you are on the computer will be shorter. You will get more tired more than other patients who do not have this problem. You will get convergence insufficiency or difficulty reading. No? After prolonged computer work, then you want to read. Sometimes there is a difficult time doing that. No? And, and uh, what you need to do is really close your eyes first, rest, and let your eyes recover. Okay. Okay. So, um, Digital eye strain is caused by a number of things, and it can be addressed if you know the cause of your digital eye strain. So the most basic is if you have a need for glasses and it is not uh, properly corrected, then you will get digital eye strain. So for uncorrected refractive error, or you are wearing an old prescription, many of my patients have been hiding at home uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, they're on quarantine or they've put themselves uh, in home quarantine so that their refractive errors are probably already the wrong prescription if it has been pre-pandemic, that's February or March 2020. No? So many of them are due for eye check for the proper correction. Unlike adults where our prescription is probably the same every year, no? especially if you're in the 20 to 40 age range, our prescription is probably the same prescription for most of the time. Um, children will have changing prescriptions. No? Um, myopia will require higher prescription as you increase your age. Hyperopic patients or farsighted patients will require lower prescriptions. So they really have to be checked. Uh, siguro one year is already waiting too long for children. Okay. Then we also notice that because of the prolonged digital exposure, we also see altered blink response, which means uh, we see them blink less. If you count the number of blinks, um, patients who, who are on the computer a lot will have reduced blink rates in the beginning no, until their uh, eyes dry up. So that we can do blink awareness exercises consciously, uh, blink a few times, maybe the teacher can incorporate this during their sessions. Um, to increase the chance, to decrease the chances that your eyes will dry up and aggravate your digital eye strain. Now, intense light exposure from the computer can be modified by reducing the light luminance. Ma'am, please unmute. You were muted. Thank you. Jan, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, where did I start? Where did I get muted? Yeah. 
Or did I get muted? Uh, blink awareness, ma'am. I think blink awareness was the last Okay, one. okay. Let's do blink awareness exercises, which means you can incorporate this into your sessions. No, Every 20 minutes, perhaps the teacher can incorporate a few blink exercises. Uh, it might be awkward in the beginning because this is not something we are used to, but that will help reduce the dry eye feeling. No? Okay, then uh, with intense light exposure, uh, we can reduce the polarity when we're projecting something, use a darker background. Um, some slides will tell you later that it helps also in myopia control. You can also reduce the brightness of the screen. No? It shouldn't be too dim, it shouldn't be too bright either. Then the closer the working distance, the more taxing it is for the eyes no? so that the comfortable distance is about 16 to 30 inches away from your eyes. Uh, we avoid a small font size, so you increase font sizes. The difficulty sometimes is if you're working on a spreadsheet for the adults who are working on spreadsheets, you like to see everything in one screen. No? So uh, I think we have to compromise a little bit we have to increase the font size so that our eyes are not too strained. If you want, you can mirror your screen to a bigger screen like your TV, for example. You can use your television as a second screen so that you see all the uh, columns that you want to see if you're using your Excel files. Okay. We used to see dry eye disease in the menopausal age group in the uh, lawyers, doctors, or medical students, or law students, those who are staying late or studying, uh, or our BPO industry, you know, because of the prolonged time they have to read or the prolonged time they have to be on the computers. We started seeing this in children a long time ago, but it's aggravated now because of the uh, prolonged digital device use in children. And uh, a perfect proof that it's contributing to dry eye disease is when we stop the use of uh, dig digital device use for at least four weeks and we get improvement in the tear breakup time and improvement in the corneal changes that we see in patients with dry eye. Okay, so another problem is this one. No? This is the wrong posture. This is a computer that's a tad too low for this patient, for this child. This is even worse. No? The computer is lower. There's a very poor posture that your children are uh, experiencing when they do this. Okay. So it contributes to digital eye strain so that you have to make sure that your computer is at the eye level uh, and that you are seated properly. Is there a problem? I, I, uh, Okay, na ba? Uh, thank you. You can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this will prevent neck and shoulder pain and uh, poor posture. No? Okay, this is uh, another illustration. Your eyes should be at the top of the computer screen or at eye level. It should be at least an arm's length, 16 to 30 inches away. You look at the wrist where they are. Uh, you have to be seated upright. No? So we have to look at that for our children who will have to probably uh, be in this situation for another year or two no? because we still don't have vaccines for children and it will take some time before we get uh, community immunity. Okay, For the workforce, if you want to do this, you can, you can also do this standing up. No? Uh, so, but the, just the same, your your computer should be at eye level, and uh, check also your the position of your um, your your what do you call this your keyboards. Okay, okay. So, uh, for those who have. Um, digital eye strain already. No? Some of them I, I've even recommended to mirror it on a TV screen so that the child does not have to look at a small screen. Some of them use the iPad, that's the easiest for the child to use, but it actually is more taxing compared to using desktops and uh, even projecting it in front of the TV. No? Now we've discussed spreadsheets earlier. Okay, um, just like 
we want to maintain physical distance to keep our community healthy. We want to keep a comfortable distance to make sure our eyes are not too strained by getting uh, uh, the distance too close. No, so so that your cell phone, which you have to hold closer than than your laptops, it's probably more taxing on the cell phone, also because of the smaller font size, compared to when you're using a laptop that you can put away at a farther distance. Okay. Um, many of the kids actually reduce the luminance no, or the brightness of their screen, but for the wrong reasons. No? They reduce it so that they can prolong the uh, brightness, they can prolong the battery life of their uh, computers or their iPads. No? But what you can tell them is you adjust it to a comfortable level and just charge it again if you have to. No? Improper lighting and too much glare will also aggravate your eye strain. Okay, this one we alluded to earlier, you have to blink more regularly. The normal blink is about 18 to 20 uh, if you're not on the computers. No? And what we saw is this, these rates can reduce to as little as four or even seven blinks when you're staring at the computer. So that can aggravate the drying and uh, get yourself into the other problems of corneal erosions, itchy eyes, uh, photophobia, all these are due to the drying of the eyes. No? And then you have visual stressors, you have increased cognitive demand, you have to be staring at the computer, you have to watch the computer because your teacher is watching you more closely. And um, not wearing glasses when you have to or wearing the wrong prescription is going to aggravate it. No? So you have to have that checked. Now, sometimes when you see your children start to squint like this, then it's really time to tell you that let's go get our glasses checked. The pinhole effect can sometimes improve the quality of the vision at the center, but it increases the fatigue uh, that your patients experience or their children experience. Okay, um, so we've discussed most of this, one, two, three, four, five, six has been discussed, but let's also discuss some of the physical arrangements in the house. No? It's very warm now, and some of you attend your Zoom classes with a, an electric fan or a uh, air conditioner. So just make sure they are not directly um, drying your eyes. No? The draft is not directly drying your eyes. Okay, And sometimes uh, we are forced to put lubricant drops for patients who have really bad dry eyes. So we put lubricants. You can put this as often as you want, but we put it before you get on the computer, maybe 30 minutes to an hour after your exposure to the computer. So if you're on the computer for four hours straight, you may want to put it in every hour. No? So that's okay. Lubricant drops, but I will uh, recommend lubricant drops that do not have preservative because we are in this for the long haul. Okay. Then you, some of your phones or maybe some of your iPads will have the night mode. No, what it does is it reduces the brighter uh, light. It will be a little bit more on the yellow side. So, But make sure there is enough luminance, there is enough light, so that it's not too dim also that will aggravate your eye strain also. No? So just what is comfortable, OK? Uh, do we want to go on? And then we'll take the questions at the end. There are two more sections. Because some of the questions might be in the uh, subsequent slides. No? So maybe I'll just go on first. So let's discuss myopia and the epidemic that it has caused. Even before the pandemic, we were already starting to uh, sound the alarm button because of the increasing myopia incidence that we are getting. Okay, it's just for to define our terms. Your normal vision. Um, when you have an image that gets into the eye, it is concentrated by your cornea that acts as a convex lens and your lens so that it gets focused on the retina. Okay, so myopia is defined as a refraction that is worse than minus 0.5 sphere. 
Okay, when you are myopic, just to simplify the discussion, your eyeball is a little bit longer than your average normal. So that this image now does not get focused on the retina, but is focused in front of the retina. Okay, now high myopia on the other hand is uh, getting a myopic error that is minus five diopter or worse. In layman's terms, this is what you hear as 500 or worse. When you take the length of the eyeball, it's more than 26 millimeters. The average length is only about 22. And your patients will actually not see the biggest E where you normally test them at 20 feet. What they will see is uh, the big E when you ask them to get closer to about three feet. It can be even worse than that. Okay. So they cannot even see the biggest letter on the chart, which is actually the standard for legal blindness already. No? So that's worse than legal blindness. Okay, this is what it looks like when we look inside the eye. No? When we say pathologic myopia, it's a myopia that's about five diopters or worse. Then you see a lot of changes on the retina like this. No? Okay, your patients can have myopic macular degeneration. My macula is the center for sharpest vision. So you, if, if you have lesions here on the macula, you will definitely not see 2020. Okay, these are some of the consequences of high myopia. This is myopic macular degeneration. This is myopic choroidal neovascularization. There are abnormal vessels under the macula. This is retinal detachment. You can get glaucoma, and in worst cases, you also get uh, cataracts in these patients. What does the patient see with these problems? This is your normal vision. You have a complete visual field. If you have an inferior retinal detachment, you will see some spots in your uh, superior field. If you have macular uh, pathology, you will have a dark spot in the center of your visual field. Okay. This is the incidence of myopia now. Here, this is where we are. 2020, we're about 33%, probably higher now in 2021. Maybe about 30, 35% of patients will have myopia. By the year 2050, that is predicted to increase to about 50% and probably even higher now that we are in the pandemic. And probably faster also, no? It, it might not take 2050 before we get a... 50% uh, of our patients to be myopic. Okay, what are some of the causes of myopia? The theory is peripheral defocus with regular glasses can uh, cause myopia. No? What does that mean? This is how your regular glasses will correct myopia. There are some areas in the periphery that will not focus on the retina so that uh, that aggravates your need to still focus so that incre that increases myopia. Intense near work is also theorized to uh, aggravate myopia. If you sit on the computer a lot and stay indoors a lot, um, you deprive yourselves of the beneficial effects of ultraviolet and dopamine then of course, there is nothing we can do with genetics, but there is a very high predisposition of inheriting myopia from your parents, okay? Uh, your patients with myopia can get amblyopia, can get strabismus, um, can get their eyes crossed like this, especially in very high refractive errors, okay? The conventional treatment includes uh, glasses, very high myopic patients, you will see the concavity where it's thicker at the periphery and thinner in the center. Contact lenses are very good for patients who have refractive errors of more than minus four or worse than minus four. Refractive surgery is reserved for patients with stable refractive errors, usually of at least one to two years duration. Okay, so if your theory is the peripheral defocus is causing the problem, then you address it optically. Uh, I think I have some, yes, here. Instead of the usual conventional glasses that will give you this correction, there are some 
uh, glasses now that will also uh, bend this focus to conform to your globe. Okay, an example of that is your myovision lens that some of you may have tried for your kids. No? But the promise of myovision is not to stop progression, but to stop the abnormal rate of progression. Okay, let's go back to the rest. So if you if your intense near work is causing your problem, then you can do 20 every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break by looking 20 feet away. If your problem is you don't get enough sunlight, then get out and get some sunlight. Um, genetics modification is probably still being studied. Okay, these are some of the optical ways of um, helping myopia. Some will use bifocal lenses. So some will use progressive lenses. Your contact lenses can also be the progressive type so that it will conform to the eyeball. Okay, the 2020 rule we discussed. This one we discussed. Okay, now prior to the pandemic, the Philippine Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology was starting to uh, get into schools. I think this is in Immaculate Conception Academy in Green Hills where we started um, making sensory pathways for kids no? so that they can get out and play instead of just being on their gadgets and playing on their gadgets. Okay, so unfortunately, the pandemic stopped our initiative. What bright lights do for you or what the ultraviolet does for you is actually retard myopia progression somewhat. There are theories about dopamine uh, helping myopia progress, uh, helping myopia progression so that it delays it or retards it. And you get more vitamin D by going outdoors. What bright lights also do for you is you will have some pupillary constriction. You will get increased depth of focus, eliminating the need for uh, refractive correction, no? at least for the very low refractive errors. Now, hopefully we can get back to this when the situation uh, normalizes. Okay, historically, um, you've heard about this, that uh, many of the uh, eye care professionals will undercorrect myopia. But what it has told us is that studies show that undercorrecting myopia will actually accelerate progression because of the optical blur and uh, because of the need to accommodate. Okay, and then rigid RGPs are rigid gas permeables. That is actually another uh, situation where we were taught in the past that it can delay myopia progression, but there is no actual evidence that it will affect myopic eye growth. Okay, so how do we stop myopia progression? Um, some of you who have access to uh, this drops, no, this is a 0.01% atropine drops. It's called myopine or atropine 0.01%. What it does is uh, it delays myopia progression and axial length elongation. It is dose dependent so that from 0 0.025 to 0.21%, you can get uh, more effect as you increase the dose. But, myo but atropine will also um blur your vision for near no? so it's not very useful during the school age group no? so what was done no? there were studies that were done on lesser concentration 0.01 percent but our meta-analysis done recently you know by my resident dr sao at the saint Luke's medical center that results for 0.01 percent atropine are still equivocal so that we don't know if it works or it doesn't work, no? So it's it's right there at the middle. And the commitment for atropine, 0.01%, is actually to put atropine once a day for two years daily, no? because of the side effects associated with higher doses. Then we've seen some patients rebound on stopping the myopine, and some authorities are even saying that if it works for the first two years, 
maybe you should continue it until the patient's eye growth really stops, which is around age 18. Okay, so for my patients, what we do is we discuss it. It's worth trying, uh, but they have to be committed for two years at least no, before we decide whether it's for you or not. Okay, there are other drugs that are being studied. Uh, cyclopentolate has no FDA uh, submission for therapeutic use in the Philippines. The Tanoprost is a drug that is used for glaucoma. Uh, it has been studied in guinea pigs with promising results. Maybe we will see this in the future. Okay, pyrenzepine gel is still not available. Okay, then many of you have probably even tried this, no? Uh, orthokeratology or purposely fitting a very tight contact lens that you wear at night so that your um, cornea does not grow or does not relax to its normal shape. No? So you purposely fit a tight fitting contact lens like this, you press on the cornea, uh, you wear it at night when you sleep so that in the morning when you remove your contact lenses, you don't have to wear glasses. No? That's the promise. And it works. It does delay myopia progression. However, um, we don't like it. Ophthalmologists do not like it because we have seen the corneal infection associated with it. It goes against what we usually tell our patients with contact lenses not to wear contact lenses to sleep. Then it creates corneal distortion and it creates epithelial defects. And the corneal distortion sometimes is so bad that I cannot refract the patients even after removal of the orthokeratol, orthoke lenses. Okay, just for a visual uh, example of what a tight fit cornea contact lens will do to you, uh, this one we're all familiar with. No? This is. Uh, the foot binding tradition that our ancestors used to do so that they get small feet. No? So the distortion is real. And that is really what we're doing to the cornea. No? We're creating a tight fit so that it does not relax to what it really will grow to. No? Okay. There's nothing we can do about myopic parents. Uh, they will give us the genes that we have. Retinopathy of prematurity puts our patients at a higher risk of developing myopia. So your preterm kids should be checked earlier for myopia. Okay, now what we can do for them is to avoid indoors or to reduce, uh, at least to get outdoor exposure. Um, prolonged near work should be modified so that it's not sustained. So that 20 minutes, take a 20 second break, look 20 feet away. Patients with higher education, the doctors, the lawyers, those who are in front of the computer a lot, will get a higher need for glasses compared to our farmers no, who are outdoors a lot. Okay. Uh, and then reversing the polarity. This is the one that uh, I wanted to tell, tell you to do. Instead of projecting your slides on a white screen like this, with black prints, um, we find that doing it this way will cause a 16 micrometer thinner choroid uh, that, will, that will aggravate your myopia progression. Whereas your choroid is noted to be thicker, 10 micrometers, when you're reading white text on a black background. So every time you have a chance to do this, maybe it's better to read on a black background and a white print or maybe a muted background like this compared to doing it on a very bright screen like this, okay? That's experimental, but it has some promise, no? Okay, then for the last section of the talk, let's talk about some myths versus the truth. Okay, perhaps the most common myth is the use of anti-blue light lente blue light lenses to protect the eyes. There, were, there was a lot of upselling juris during this pandemic, but there really is no clear evidence of protecting the eyes from screen use by using blue light lenses. Okay, so the Philippine Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology actually has this infographic that has been translated to different, um, different languages, no? including our neighboring uh, Malaysian colleagues. So what is true about blue light? Blue light from screens will not harm the eyes. 
the amount of blue light from our computer screen is not significant to cause eye disease. It is not blue light per se that causes digital eye strain, but the digital eye strain is caused by how we use our devices and not by the blue light. Anti-blue light glasses supposedly claim to improve sleep, but we will really improve sleep if we reduce screen time at night without the need for special glasses. And uh, there's also a claim that anti-blue light glasses improve eye health. They have not really been proven to improve eye health. Now, these are the studies that uh, we've done on blue light. I think it started because blue light of about 400 to 500 nanometers was, postulate, was postulated to be harmful to the retina, especially at around 440 nanometers. But this is for age-related macular degeneration, okay? Um, if you start disrupting blue light here, you will affect your sleep-wake cycle and even your memory to some extent. Okay, um, the ICNIRP, um, I've, the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection Group studied that the cutoff value for harmful blue light is this one, 10.4 CD meter squared. Your incandescent lamp will give you 14% emission. Your domestic lamps, including your LEDs, will give you about 10 to 20%. But how much do you get from your computer, which is our concern now? There is really very low levels of blue light from digital screens. It is not a biohazard. And you actually get more blue light from your home exposure, no? from your LED lights at home. Okay, this is the, it's a very uh, cluttered table, but what it really tells you is if you look closely at it, the percent of ICNIRP blue light exposure limit for our computers is very low. No? Uh, nothing exceeds 0.38%, and that's highest on your smartphone screens. Okay, so none of the computer monitors, laptops, tablets, or smartphones exceeded 0.39% of blue light exposure limit determined by the ICNIRP. So that blue light from these screens do not present a biohazard even with prolonged viewing. Okay. And then uh, there were studies also on uh, blue blocking lenses. No? They studied blue control from Hoya, blue protect from Zeiss, Crisal Preventia from Essilor, and stress-free and no flex from Swiss lens. And of the four lenses that studied, uh, they only blocked blue light by around 16, uh, 10 to 24 percent. Of course, they will say manufacturers will now say uh, the technology has changed from the time of that study. Um, what we need really is uh, higher quality research for blue blocking lenses and its effect and its effects on eye health. Okay, so what do we recommend for 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 this? We limit the amount of screen time if we can reduce the screen time at night so that we sleep earlier. Take frequent breaks from screen, reduce the brightness to a comfortable level, but it should not be too dim, and to increase physical activity. Okay. This is another myth that we hear a lot. Will eating carrots and squash improve eyesight? While eating carrots and squash will be good for the body, including the eyes, it will not change your refractive error and will not improve your eyesight. Okay? Uh, will going too close to the TV cause blurring of vision? Although excessive near work is a risk factor in developing nearsightedness, children who prefer to do things close to their face, like going too close to the TV, uh, should be checked for poor vision because it may be the reason rather than the cause. Okay, so they should be examined by the eye doctor as soon as possible. Can glasses or contact lenses cure myopia? The answer is no. Glasses and contact lenses can provide clear vision, but will not change the need for glasses. Okay, this is also very common. I, will eye exercises of, or vision therapy improve vision? If you talk to ophthalmologists, that's a myth. What works is orthoptics or eye exercises for convergence insufficiency, uh, behavioral vision therapy, 
is still scientifically unproven, but there are some already practicing behavioral vision therapy. Um, there is no evidence that vision therapy improves or retards myopia development. Okay. If there is anything to take home from this uh, lecture, it's summarized by this two infographic, which you can access at the Philippine Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus website, uh, Facebook page. Okay, I think that's my last slide. Thank you Thank very you. much, Dr. Alvina. Um, and now the floor is now open for question and answers. And we already have a lot of parents and participants here who are who have already um, questions posted in the chat box. So if you have any other questions, kindly please post your questions in the chat box and we'll um, read them for you. Okay, so um, Dr. Alvina, for the um, because a while ago you were mentioning about our eyes getting dried up, no, for after some time of um, using the computer or even um, along the day, no. Um, there's a question here from Rich. Um, what is the substitute for IMO or Visine before it is easy to purchase? But now, um, buying these eye care products already need doctor prescriptions. Uh, I'm surprised that that it did, no? but uh, it's probably because there are a lot of abuse. No? When you buy IMO, you have, there are two kinds of IMO, no? if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. There's a blue one and a mm -hmm. red one. No? The red one is supposedly the one that takes your red eye out in just a few drops. We don't like that drop. Uh, we don't like that because there is a uh, rebound congestion. No? There is a decongestant, just like we don't like decongestants for patients with a stuffy nose, um, the decongestants can give you rebound congestion. So usually we reserve that for uh, very short-term use, maybe no longer than three days, because after three days, some patients will get rebound congestion. It, it, it will actually aggravate the drying. What we like is the blue one that's high promelos, but we don't like that for prolonged use because it has preservative. Now, sometimes you're reacting to the preservative, not to the active ingredient of the eye drop. So there are a lot of um, there are a lot of drops that are preservative free. There is sodium hyaluronate that's preservative free. There's hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose or carboxy methyl cellulose that is also preservative free. If you can, there's also cationorm. I, I forget the uh generic for that um but if you can get your hand on the preservative free preparation even sustain has preservative free preparation that's the one that's better to use for a prolonged period of time okay thank you and um in relation to that um you already mentioned what are the um better replacements no those without preservatives but um i'm not sure if you will answer these questions because i think these are brands um they have the um is the roto a japanese eye drop r-o-h-t-o good how about tears natural okay i don't know what's in roto so i cannot comment on roto tears natural is the first generation one of the earlier generation tears Tear replacements that we're using. Now, if you're fine with Tears Natural, you can continue using that. There are two generations. There's Tears Natural 1 and Tears Natural 2. The reason it's not being taken off the market is there are some patients who do very well with Tears Natural, no? uh, but it has preservative. There is no preservative free preparation for Tears Natural 1 or 2. No, but what the beauty of it is, is it, it's in a multi-dose container. And I think it's 15 ml. No? So it turns out to be very economical. But um, if you have big vials like that or big uh, volume of eye drops like that, make sure that you take care of the cap and recapping. No? It's, it's when, when you open a bottle, the, the manufacturer will always tell you that do not use it beyond one month. No? The reason the reason we do that, or the reason they do that, is because we don't know how you uh, handle your eye drops. No, many of us put that in the bags. It's not in a second container that will keep it from all the dirt and junk that's in your bag. It's usually the rim 
that will catch the dirt. No? So if you open the bottle and you put the bottle on the table and then recap it, all the microorganisms or the dirt from your table will get recapped with your bottle. Okay, so usually we want it uh, turned mm -hmm. upward no? so that uh, you don't get the dirt from your table and make sure the tip does not touch any surface. No? So when you put the drop, make sure you're a few centimeters to inches away from your eyes. Mm -hmm. then, the, then you can recap, then probably you can use, you can use your eye drop for longer periods. Thank you. And here is another question, because during this pandemic, we try as much as possible to not to go out, especially with kids, no? Um, but how can we see a doctor during this pandemic, an eye doctor? Okay, the, the problem with refraction is it has to be a face-to-face -face, uh, encounter. We cannot do your, we cannot check your glasses without seeing you face-to-face -face because there's a subjective uh component to it there's an objective component to it you have to look at the chart we have to neutralize neutralize with lenses now, so in the meantime um, that we cannot see you make sure that the eye strain is relieved somewhat so how do you do that if the patient cannot see it well with your regular font size then you maybe you can expand it or you can increase the font size reduce the glare practice 20 20 20 and maybe put some eye drops uh to neutralize the drying but we need to see you unfortunately we really need to see you to check the refraction okay um for um there's a question here um do nearsighted people need glasses uh yes and no <laughs> okay it's uh, nearsighted patients who see well who see when you put the correction and then they see 2020 at distance they have a bad habit of removing the, the eyeglasses when they're looking at something for near. That works very well for patients who are myopic for up to about maybe one diopter or 100, as, as Lehman call it, no? because it gives you a good clear vision up to that distance. If you are higher than minus one, then you'll have to bring your image closer to you so that uh, this one taxes you more, right? Anything closer than 16 inches is probably going to tax you more. If, if your distance prescription does not allow you to see 2020 at distance, then maybe you have some type of amblyopia or lazy eye. And the only way you will improve is if you wear your glasses. If you have symptoms, if you have eye strain, if you have headache, then you really have to wear glasses both at distance and at near. No? If you have astigmatism to go with your uh, myopia, then you also have to wear glasses because removing the glasses will only uh, be good for a certain amount of myopia, but will not be good for uh, astigmatism. So it will depend on your actual prescription. But the safer way is really to have them wear the glasses. Okay, thank you. Um, here, is there a real difference between the types or brands of lenses? Um, there used to be an ordinary and multi-coated. Um, now there's crystal, blue light, protection, etc., and prices vary. Does it really matter? Okay. Uh, usually I tell my patients not to buy the very cheap lenses because there is distortion on the lenses. No? Um, so the process lenses, I don't have any proprietary interest with these lenses. At least a Crizal, for example, or Crizal Sapphire or the equivalent in another brand, um, your patients will do well no, with the process lenses or the multi, anyan? what did you say? Multi-focal. Multi-coated, multi-coated yeah, lenses. Multi um, yung buying blue blue filter lenses, no, we, we always say it, it's not proven to work. But UV protection lenses, we like that. No? So what some manufacturer did is actually to package UV protection with the blue light protection. So if you if you want that, it's it's called blue UV capture. No? So they package it together. Then I mean, go ahead and do it. No, but if you're getting it for the blue light protection, it has it still has to be proven to work. Now, but I think there's no harm done in getting it. The problem with the blue light uh, filter lenses, however, is some patients get bothered by the lack of blue tint. No? Those who are graphic artists, for example, mm -hmm. uh, they will see a yellowing yes. of the images. No? Tsaka, 
the original generation will have some violet tinge to the lenses. I don't know if you've seen that. No, you'll get some violet tinge to the lenses. So some of the male patients or the male kids or the male teenagers do not like it also because of that major violet na tint. So in relation to visiting a doctor during this pandemic, no, um, we have to go visit a doctor, eye doctor, because we get, have to get tested. But just in case that um, we cannot always go out, is it is there a possible way for us to test at home first to determine if we if there are issues and we need to really go see an eye doctor? Yes, there is. Very good question. Uh, there are downloadable charts. No, um, you go to the site of the American Academy of Pediatric Ophthalmology. There is a Snellen chart that you can download and you can print. Um, usually, that chart is calibrated for ten feet. Okay, so you have to. Uh, Post it on the wall for about 10 feet. Make sure you print it properly in, on a good piece of paper. Uh, your ink fills up the letters, no? Because if if your ink does not fill it up, then maybe it's the it's the print that's a problem and not your child's vision. So it's calibrated at 10 feet. You place that's the distance between your uh, chart and your patient's eyes. Um, and then you test one eye at a time. So that's a good screening screening test that you can do. Your patients should see at least 2030. Then you don't have to panic. Now 2030 is about two lines from the bottom, if I remember right. Okay, so that's a very good question. Thank you. And then here, um, I'm not sure. I, I think this was mentioned also during the discussion. Does wearing glasses with blue shield harmful? Uh, it's not really harmful, no harm done by wearing it, but it has not been proven to work. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Okay, um, um, here's a, a, um, there's a situation here no, by, by Ms. Jovi. Um, my son just turned 17 this year, around eight to nine years ago. He had a very high fever that triggered a temporary vision problem. His vision would zoom in and out unexpectedly and repeatedly. He sees things either too big or too small for his vision. I had him checked by an ophthalmologist and neurologist. He was cleared by ophthalmologist and the neurologist sus suspected that he had Alice in Wonderland syndrome. He went through all tests, including EMU, but found nothing and eventually it, is, it just disappeared. Lately, during the pandemic, he would tell me that it's happening again. He noticed that every time he looked at his iPad for a long time, after taking his eyes off the iPad, his vision would either zoom in where everything is so near to his eyesight or too far that everything is too small. He uses the iPad for online school. It will, he will, oh, sorry, it will just disappear after a few minutes or when he rests his eyes, he rests his eyes. Is this normal? Could this be connected to what happened over eight years ago? Or are there anything we should do or check to see what causes this one? You see, it looks like, uh, I'm not sure if, if he will still meet the Alice in Wonderland syndrome again. But, but from an eye standpoint, this could be what we term a ciliary muscle spasm or fatigue. No? The ciliary muscle is the muscle for focusing. It is attached to your lens. Uh, it is the it's the muscle that's responsible to change the the focus and defocus of your lens. Um, when when that muscle is tired or fatigued, or it gets into spasm, so that the child what the child is able to do is uh, unable to do is find a clear focus. No, or if your child is looking at the iPad for a sustained period of time and the iPad looks focused, when you look at the distance. It takes a while to defocus or to change the focus because the, the focusing muscle is overworked already looking at near. So what do we do for those patients? Number one, make sure that there is no need for glasses. If there is a need for glasses, then he has to wear it no matter how low that prescription is. There are some pharmacologic agents we can use to uh, relax the focusing muscle, but that will blur his vision uh, during the day, you know, so usually we put that at night. It's very similar to the atropine, 0.01%, uh, but we use a weaker preparation first. Number three, this is probably the case where mirroring the image instead of using the iPad, it should probably be projected on a bigger screen like your television 
no? so that he does not have to uh, tax his eyes at the near at the smaller iPad. No? So you have to mirror it at the bigger image. Unfortunately, patients with um, ciliary muscle fatigue or ciliary muscle syndrome, sometimes it's the patient's personality. No? They are type A persons and they're very intent on what they're doing at near. They're very focused. They're very determined to finish. Uh, it, takes, it, it takes a certain personality to do that. Um, sometimes they bring it to adulthood. No? Uh, so any near work, will get them into that. So sometimes for adult patients, and even for this child, maybe we can do some relaxation techniques. We've recommended yoga sometimes. We've recommended massages for some of these adults, adult patients also. So they need to relax with the work that they're doing. So doing it on the iPad is not relaxing. So you have to project it to a bigger, bigger screen. So maybe the television can help as a monitor. And if that still doesn't help, you can even project it like you're in a classroom, you know, your LCD projectors or your digital light projectors. Okay. Um, from Dr. Ellen Tanku, she said, thank you very much for the extensive discussion. I have the following questions. Regarding the graph that you presented where there is a 33% myopia incidence in the year 2019, were all the patients newly diagnosed myopics, non-genetic related, and all secondary to prolonged screen time? Uh, it's not, it, they're not all secondary to prolonged screen time. This is a, uh, what do you call it, a cohort study so that at one point in time, all those myopic patients um, are, are gathered together and all the patients that we see, about 30% of them are myopic. And then... With the atropine eye drops, are there any precautions for patients with cardiac conditions or are there any systematic consequences or precautions in using the eye drop? Okay, the cardiac complications with atropine was reported with full strength atropine, which is 1%. The atropine that we are using for myopia control is 1 one hundredth of the strength. So it's only 0.01%. So that at this concentration, the side effects is almost nil no, to maybe very minimal. And none of, none of the cardiac complications that were reported with 1% were uh, seen. No? The usual complications with the full strength, which is not what we're using, is tachycardia. Some, some will get elevated blood pressure. Uh, but that's very rare with the 1 100th strength, so 0.01%. What's the other question? Did I answer all that? Um... Yeah, um, systematic. Mostly are not. there any systematic consequences? I think you did already. Uh, okay. And then this is this question is not related directly to our topic, but do you recommend annual visual testing for school children across all levels? Actually, yes. No, it's not just for school children. For adults also, at least once a year, we should have our eyes checked. Younger children below age seven, I usually recommend checking them every six months because their refraction can change very fast. No? Uh, during this pandemic, I recommend if you can have them, self, have them check every six months because of the prolonged uh, eye strain that we invariably are in because of the pandemic. No? Admittedly, we are all on the computer more than we want to. Uh, our children included, adults included. So adults should probably be checked at least once a year. Children should probably be checked every six months. And then since we cannot go out often, although we would like to, for example, let our children do outdoor activities, but is, is it appropriate, is the appropriate vitamin D3 consumption or what is the appropriate vitamin D3 consumption um, you can recommend in line of sun exposure? Dr. Di Chao, who is also the mentor and uh, extended pediatrician of my son, who actually did some vitamin D3 determination before prescribing uh, vitamin D3 supplements. No? So if, you're, if you have enough levels of vitamin D3, there's probably no point uh, giving supplements. But that's best discussed with your pediatricians as well. Okay, so there's a recommended dosage based on the uh, vitamin D levels that you have. So I cannot answer that. Okay. Um, so um, our um, head teacher is asking, um, Dr. Alvina, is it possible for you to give us your um, clinic address and maybe a contact number? 
Ah, uh, I see patients at St. Luke's Medical Center, QC. I see patients at uh, the Medical City. Um, and I see patients outside facility, that's Galileo Surgery Center. All of them have telephone numbers online. And I think Roslyn is with you. So she's referred a lot of patients to me. Uh, I see some of, I, th I think some of you are my patients. Some of the attendees here, uh, I have patients. No? Okay. I see a lot of patients in St. Luke's. St. Luke's, St. Luke's, I'm sorry, St. Jude. No? St. Jude is very notorious for giving a lot of homeworks. Uh, I think Father is, is concerned about uh, the need to maintain the, the standard of St. Jude being very academic and very progressive in that sense in terms of academics and parents demanding reduced screen time. No? Unfortunately, we are already in this pandemic and we are forced to uh, increase the screen time more than we have to. So the, the way to go around it really is to make sure that we what, what the studies have found is really not the, the actual time we spend in front of the computer, but the sustained time we spend in front of the computer. So if we can get into the habit of 20.20.20, which means every 20 minutes, 20 second break, look 20 feet away, blink your eyes, make sure your eyes are hydrated, they don't dry up so much. I think we will reduce somewhat the uh, digital eye strain that our patients, are, our children are experiencing, or even adults are experiencing. So what is the cause of um, lazy eye? How do kids get it? And then if um, lazy eye is not addressed while young, can this be permanent once turned 18? Wow, very good question. Okay, uh, lazy eye can, can be due to many things. No? One is the eyes cross. That's the most obvious, the eyes cross or the eyes drift. If one eye crosses or the, it drifts out, your, your brain, the adult patient will see two images. The child so that the brain does not get confused, the inherent um, reaction by the child's brain is to suppress the image from one eye so that they don't see two. Mm -hmm. if, he, if, if the child suppresses the image from the one eye, the stimulation to develop visual system in that eye decreases so that as your deviation progresses uh, and your eye is neglected more of the time, you develop lazy eye in the eye that is not used. No? So the eye that's drifted um, will develop lazy eye. Now you can also develop lazy eye or amblyopia if the refractive error is not the same in both eyes. Usually the eye with the higher refractive error will be lazier. What does that mean? Um, even if I put the correction on, the eye with a higher refractive error will not reach 2020 or will not reach its full potential if you don't intervene. Number three, you can get bilateral lazy eye. This is a little bit harder to understand because you don't see the crossing and you don't see a difference in grade. But sometimes we see that in patients with very high refractive errors, sometimes rarely with lower refractive errors, but usually in patients with higher refractive errors, which means we give them the glasses and the visual potential reaches only up to 2040, 2050, when it should be already 2020 by age seven. Is it permanent? Uh, maybe up to 30, 50% of adult visual loss is from uncorrected childhood amblyopia or uh, amblyopia that was not addressed in childhood. Can we still do something? We used to teach um, that amblyopia will only improve when you patch, if there is a better eye and a poorer eye, amblyopia will only improve when you patch the better eye or penalize the better eye up to around age 10. But there were studies in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe earlier than that, where uh, 18 years old and below were, were studied and they saw an improvement, even in the 10 to 18. It tells us that the visual system is still somehow still plastic or still moldable after age 10. Um, so I think now, even, even in adult patients who want to try patching, I let them try it first before giving up on the um, visual system, no? that uh, telling yourself that it's not going to work. 
Okay, so we try it first. Unfortunately, patching is very uh, disconcerting or very bothersome because you're patching the better eye. Mm -hmm. So many children who do not understand the reason why you're patching will really remove the patch. No? So there are other means. One of them is pharmacologically uh, penalizing one eye with atropine, 1%, but that's, that's easy, but we usually do that once a week only. And we find that in six months, uh, there is equal improvement with the eye drops and the patching in the younger child, children below age seven. Uh, but it will only work for certain uh, refractive errors if if it's if if you put the eye drop and that eye will still be the better eye then it will still not work for uh, penalization okay did i answer all your questions multiple young questions uh, yes for the eye patch yes um because um, uh, for the lazy eye yes uh, um here's a question from father king um, um is the is it indicated in the eye care products that it, there are preservatives or it's with preservative or preservative free the preservative free eye drops will tell you it's preservative free the the default is it has preservative there okay okay the default is it has preservative unless the the packaging tells you it's preservative free and then there's here one more from father Iki. Um, hello, good morning. Is it advisable to buy reading glasses sold at the malls? Reading glasses with grade 100, 150, 200, depending on the clarity of the reading glasses. Thank you. Okay, reading glasses are actually addition lenses that is added to your distance prescription. So it will only work if your prescription does not have astigmatism or your prescription does not... Uh, if your prescription, after, it's, it's an algebraic summing. For example, if your distance prescription is, is plus two and you need, you're 40 years old, you need addition lenses of plus one, then you can buy over the counter plus threes. But if your prescription is, if you lo look at your prescription and there are a lot of numbers, there are three columns on the numbers, then your over the counter uh, reading glasses will not work. And all, all it does for you is really magnify it. But if it's the wrong prescription, it will still give you eye strain. Okay, some people are lucky because they don't have astigmatism. They don't have prescription for distance. So when you're 40, you use about plus one diopter and you can buy that over the counter. If you're 50, you need about plus two. You can buy that over the counter. So it depends on your distance prescription. If your distance prescription and your reading addition will give you a range of power between plus one to plus three, then you can buy over-the-counter reading glasses. The quality of the lenses is not as good as when you have them specially made. No? So if you're not very particular with that, with the distortion in the periphery, then you can buy that. The beauty of that is you can pop one in the car, you can leave one in your bag, you can leave one in beside your newspaper, and uh, you will have a lot of reading glasses and you will not have a difficult time reading. No? But it's not for everybody. Okay, um, here, my daughter is currently using ortho K lenses to control her myopia. She's 13 years old and her eye grade is 350 to 450 with 75 to 100 increase per year. Do you think it's advisable for her to continue using her ortho K lenses or better to stop it as soon as possible? Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, ophthalmologists, if you talk to an ophthalmologist, we will probably, maybe 80 to 90% of us will say, we do not like ortho K lenses because of the problems that we see. We don't see it in all of them, but uh, if we get an infection, if we get corneal distortion, it's very difficult to reverse. Um, so I have patients who want to go into ortho -K and I say, if you go into ortho -K, then I will have to stop being your physician. So that tells you my bias. My bias is I do not like ortho -K. So you have to discuss that with your eye care professional. Um, and then... Um... Uh, there's one more here. My daughter's prescription is currently 70 to 800 and she's now 17. Is there a chance or what can we do to lower her prescription? Uh, there, if, if the cycloplegic refraction or the refraction where we relax the focusing muscle and, sh and it shows us that that is really her prescription, minus seven and minus eight, I think. 
um, there is really nothing we can do to lower that prescription except maybe to do uh, surgical procedures on it later when the, the refraction is more stable. If, however, your minus seven to minus eight is really a refraction uh, that's higher compared to when your eyes are relaxed. Now, and I see this a lot. Uh, when we put the eye drops to relax the, the eye muscles, we see that, let's say, for that patient, it could be minus five and minus six. Then you can lower it to minus five to minus six if you do change the habits, no? because the minus two addition is really a contribution of, of fatigue and eye strain. We cannot do anything about the objective the relaxed state refraction, but we can do something about the contribution of eye strain and fatigue. And um, what's the best age to get LASIK? Um, usually we want, we want to do refractive laser correction or LASIK is what, it's just one of the uh, ways to do it. Um, we, we, I recommend that to patients if you have very high refractive errors, um, Usually above minus one to minus six, we have very good results. But we usually recommend that around age 18 to 21, and the premise being your refraction has been stable for at least one year, preferably two years. So it can vary from patient to patient. Some will be stable at age 18. So the past two years, the refraction has not changed. Then you can go ahead and plan uh, laser refractive correction. If your refractive correction is still changing, then I, we wait a while. Okay. Uh, my, my daughter who needs corrective eyeglasses, however, uh, my daughter needs corrective eyeglasses. However, when she started to get and tested at age four, since reading is yet a reliable test and drawing can be subjective, um, it was hard to find the right doctor to check. We started with optical shop. However, we, wo we warn it didn't help much, so we consulted a pediatric opta who charged per session. She had to have another one made. How do we really know our kids are getting the right grade of their, in their corrective glasses? Um, one is you research who your, who your pediatric ophthalmologists are. Now, there are about 50 of us already. Um, I think we are all at least all who are members of the Pediatric Society of Pe Philippine Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus will probably have uh, relatively fairly comparable skills in terms of refraction. If the children are not very cooperative, we compare, uh, we look at your objective refraction. No? Uh, objective refraction meaning we put drops, we dilate the pupils, we relax the pupils, uh, we relax the focusing muscle so that we can get an objective finding of what the true refractive state of the eye is. And then based on that true refractive state, uh, we will have experience which ones will cause um, lazy eye or which ones will be at risk for crossing, which ones will have to have a correction right away. Many of them will just require observation, which means you'll need repeated refraction um, every so often, three to four months, if it's high risk, every six months, if it's low risk. Okay, thank you. And for the last question for today, is there a way to, I, I'm sorry, um, where is it? Oh, here yes. Is there a way to bring down the grade of astigmatism or just to maintain it and not make it worse? Uh, astigmatism is related more to the shape of the eye. Um, so usually the astigmatism that you have at age seven is probably there to stay. Um, it's probably your adult shape. No? What we can do with astigmatism actually is aggravate it by eye strain. When you aggravate it by eye strain, you increase with the rule astigmatism. That's the part of astigmatism that you can also modify by uh, reducing eye strain. Um, did I answer that? I think I think that's that's the question. The I say, yeah. Uh -uh. Last na the last na last na talaga. Um, there's a pahabul question here. Um, what is the difference between prescription eyeglasses from Opta and the ones from computer computed in the malls for from uh, the eyeglass makers? 
Uy, thank you very much for that question. I did not mention it. 90% uh, of the time, computer autorefraction is wrong in children. 90% of the time, it's correct in adults. Okay, so uh, the, way, the way to use computerized autorefraction is it should be a good starting point for checking your need for glasses, but it should be checked it should be counter-checked. You should not be content with a prescription that was just derived from the computer if it was not checked, it was not counter-checked. No? So, because it can be 90% wrong in children, especially younger than age seven. The reason being, when you look inside the computerized autorefractor, no, you see a blurry image. No? Um, it, it's designed like that so that uh, presumably you're, you will relax because you can't make it clear and you will relax. But children have very strong focusing muscles and they can get into a range of up to 13 diopters. Now, it, you can get into that error, 1,300. So I have patients who were given uh, up to 800 refractive correction. And when I dilated them, the patient's refraction was zero. So that is the reason why we have to correlate it. We have to check it in the clinic. There's an objective objective part of the refraction, there's a subjective part of the refraction, and there is a cyclopedic part where we put drops to relax the focusing muscles. So that is why we need a face-to-face. -face. We cannot just do it based on your auto automated computerized autorefraction. So this is also true for nearsighted people. They need to go face-to-face -face so that they can get their eyeglasses. Yes. I, I if, you want eyeglasses correct. if you want your refraction check, it really is a face-to-face. So thank you very much, Dr. Ra. Um, it was a very um, informative session, including the Q&A. There are a lot of very nice questions and um, your answers actually gave us a lot of information on how we, what to do and what else we can do to protect our eyes. Thank you very much, Dr. Ra. And now for the presentation of certificates, uh, may we call on our SJCSAA secretary, our LMPAG president, Mrs. Jehan Lee. Don, can we share the certificates? Okay, first, um, St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association, St. Jude Catholic School Parents Auxiliary Group, St. Jude Catholic School Award the Certificate of Appreciation um, first to Dr. Roslyn Cody Shaw for her contribution in conceptualizing and organizing the webinar, Wonder Vision, Keeping Kids Pandemic Eyes Healthy via Zoom Live, given this 29th day of August in the year of the Lord 2021, signed Reverend Father Roland Aquino, School Director, St. Jude Catholic School, Mr. Johnny C., President, SJCS Alumni Association, Mrs. Rachel U. Garcia, President, High School PAG, Mrs. Jan Vanessa Cialy, President Elementary PAG. Mrs. Audrey Miet Season, President Early Childhood Department PAG. Is Dr. Roslyn here? I think she's not. She's not here. So we'll just. I think um, she's on call. I think she's on, on duty. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next. St. Jude Catholic School Alumni Association, St. Jude Catholic School Parent Auxiliary Group, St. Jude Catholic School Award this Certificate of Appreciation to Al Dr. Alvina Pauline Santiago for sharing her expertise to the St. Jude Catholic School community as speaker in the webinar Wonder Vision, Keeping Kids Pandemic Eyes Healthy via Zoom Live, given this 29th day of August in the year of the Lord, 2021. Signed. Reverend Father Roland Aquino, SVD School Director, St. Jude Catholic School, Mr. Johnny C., President, SJCS Alumni Association, Mrs. Rachel Garcia, President, High School PAG, Mrs. Jan Vanessa Cialy, President, Elementary PAG, Mrs. Audrey Miet Season, President, Early Childhood Department PAG. Thank you very much, Dr. Santiago. Thank you very much for the invite. Appreciate the taking care of kids' eyes during this pandemic. Thank you for thinking of the kids. Shirley? 
Thank you. Thank you, Jehan. Thank you again to um, Dr. Di Chao and Dr. Uh, Santiago. And now may we request everyone to switch on their webcams for our group photo. So let's have our remembrance for this very insightful and very informative um, webinar. Um, 请大家打开摄像头让我们一起拍照和影留念。谢谢. And while the um, your webcams are open, we would like to request Mr. Helido um, to take care of the taking of the photos. Um, since we don't know on what page you are in his um, Zoom link or in her, his Zoom view, um, kindly just smile until our uh, Mr. Helido will say that he's done taking the photos. Thank you. So everybody, please smile. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Shirley. Okay. A smile, everyone. Hold your smile while I take your picture. We have seven pages of participants, so I hope you hold your smiles for me for more than those. Wait, let's go. I'm on the first page. On the second page. On the third page now. Page okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, na po. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Mr. Helido. And for our closing remarks and prayer, may we call on Mr. Ah, Father, Reverend Father Ferdinand Bahao, our Formation Division Head and School Chaplain. Hello. Good morning, everyone. And uh, before I give the prayer, I would like to share this uh, passage from the Gospel of St. Luke. And maybe you can see Can you see it? Yes, yes, Father. Yes. Uh, it says here in Luke chapter 11, verse 34, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. So this is also very insightful as a passage because the Lord says that it's our eyes is the clue to what is happening inside us. So in a spiritual way, we are invited also that we will take care not only of our physical eyes, but also the eyes of our souls. And I think the act of organizing this activity is a very uh, effective way also of encouraging everyone, especially our children, to maintain the balance of our spiritual sight and also our physical sight. And this is a this is kudos to our teachers, to our uh, AA, our PAG, to our elders, and everybody who are concerned about this topic because it's a way of taking good care of each other. So thank you and congratulations for this beautiful and meaningful activity. So congratulations, everyone. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. St. Jude Thaddeus, pray, pray for us. St. Arnold Janssen and St. Joseph Freinadimitz, pray mm -hmm. for us. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray right. for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father Bahau. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to our organizers, SJCS Alumni Association, St. Jude Catholic School, and SJCS Parents Auxiliary Group. 相信今天的研讨会让我们每个人受益良多，让我们大家保护好我们每个人，还有我们孩子们的眼睛。Thank you everyone for attending today's health talk. Let's take good care of our eyes. See you again in our next health talk series. 祝大家身体健康，阖家安康。Have a nice weekend.
St. Jude Catholic School is a basic education provider. Owned and managed by the Society of the Divine Word. It was founded by Reverend Father Peter Young, SVD. Monsignor Peter Chow, SVD. And Monsignor Charles Chu in July 1963. A leading Chinese Filipino Catholic school witnessing to the word in the world. Preparing students for life through Christ-centered education and integral human development for social transformation under the patronage of St. Jude Thaddeus. As a school, we are committed to provide quality and relevant education that promotes discipline, human values, holistic development, service, and excellence. As a Catholic school, we are committed to be rooted on gospel values. As a Chinese-Filipino school, we take pride in our unique cultural heritage to become responsible citizens of the world. As a school of the Society of the Divine Word, we live out prophetic dialogue and proclaim the kingdom of God's love. Our core values, Christ-centeredness, service, excellence, commitment, and discipline.